Hello everyone, today I'll be ranking my top 10 LEGO Star Wars sets based on the original Star Wars A New Hope. This will be my personal list, so I'm sure some of you will have differing opinions, and let me know your favorites down in the comments. So let's go ahead and jump right into the list. At the bottom of the list, I have the 75365 Yavin 4 Rebel Base. I know some people aren't as fond of this set, but I enjoy it for the most part. You get a wide selection of figures that cover everyone you'd want, and the build looks solid for the most part. The inclusion of the medals as separate pieces was also quite the improvement from previous years. The outside looks nice, but you turn around and you have a whole rebel base you can play with. There's quite a lot going on back there and you can recreate a good amount of the scenes from the movie. Plus, I'd say the build looks pretty solid. That tree is pretty gross looking, but other than that, I think it's a great piece for display and play. Part of the reason I enjoy it is just how different it is from other LEGO Star Wars sets. I still definitely feel this set can fend for itself though, and while it's not perfect, it definitely earns my 10th spot. Taking my 9th spot is the 6211 Imperial Star Destroyer, a staple Star Wars ship that is built with some great quality here. This design isn't much different from the most current Star Destroyer. The only con I see with the build is the bridge is open. I'm just not too sure why they did that. Other than that though, they did a great job with the build and it doesn't really show its age. Plus, there's really quite a large interior space for lots of fun to be had on the inside. The minifigures in this set are amazing too. LEGO used to be a bit more generous back in the day with how many figures we'd get. In this set though, it's not just the quantity, it's also the quality. It's a great lineup of characters that round out this set nicely. At 8, I have the 75301 Luke Skywalker's X-Wing. This set looks spectacular. They have the shape down perfect and it's so smooth from all the tiles they used. It gives it a very clean look and it sets it apart from all the other playscale X-Wings we've gotten. Another thing that sets it apart is its figures. Most of the time in an X-Wing set, you know, we get the basic Rebel Pilots and an Astromech. But this time on top of that, we got General Dodonna and Princess Leia. This was a great choice. It made the minifigure lineup way more interesting and it helped it complete the set and help it stand out from its many predecessors. Sitting at number 7 is the 8018 Darth Vader's TIE Fighter. One of the few times we've seen this ship represented in LEGO Star Wars and they did a great job with it. It holds up well to today. Maybe one too many exposed studs, but this was pretty standard at the time of its release. I will say having only Darth Vader as the sole minifigure included is not a great aspect of this set, but it's totally understandable as it really kind of would be hard to include anyone else. Still though, I think it's a very solid set, and if we're being honest, it's a good build. And Vader is really the only minifigure inclusion that makes sense. Some of you might wonder why the UCS version of this set isn't on the list, and I'll say it just barely missed it. That set shows its age a bit more than this one, so that along with cost is why I had this one here instead. Claiming number 6 on my list is the 10198 Tanif 4. This was a LEGO set I always wanted as a kid, but I just never got and I really regret it. It's a great model of a Tanif 4 and comes with all the figures you'd expect. R2, C-3PO, Leia, Captain Antilles, and a Rebel Fleet Trooper. The build wasn't without its flaws, but it was pretty great and had some cool features that allowed for some fun play. This ship is just really fun in LEGO form and is such an amazing design. It's a very well put together set that feels complete and has that classic LEGO charm to it. In the middle of the list at 5 is the 75055 Imperial Star Destroyer. This ship looks great and is just a natural improvement from the one earlier on the list. While an outsider's glance might not see it as that much different, this version has a carry handle and an even better interior than its predecessor. Particularly, I love the inclusion of the bridge in the ship's interior. Even though it's not accurate and that's not where the bridge would actually be, it looks perfect and it fits the ISD so well. The minifigures are a great group as well. You get a plenty adequate crew to man this vessel that are all detailed exquisitely. Now it's been a while but this is actually the last playscale Star Destroyer we've seen and it's definitely done it justice. The fourth best set on my list is the 75387 Boarding the Tanif 4. 
With this set, you get the best of both worlds. This set has both playability and great displayed potential in the same set. It's kind of crazy LEGO only finally made this set in 2024. Luckily, they did a great job with it once they finally decided to make a set off the iconic opening scene. The minifigure lineup is absolutely perfect, and there's even a bonus figure for the 25th anniversary. For $55, it's a spectacular deal for the build, but mainly the seven minifigures included that all look great. This set was built with a lot of care and looks great while including all the play features you'd want from the scene. Stepping into the top three, the 75290 Moss Isley Cantina takes my third spot. This set has quite the wow factor. From the outside, it might not look like much, but when you open it, there's a whole new world inside. This build captures the cantina perfectly. It's a great job done by the designer. The bigger selling point though, in my opinion, is the minifigures. You get 21 minifigures in the set. This wretched hive of scum and villainy has so many cool figures from the band to Greedo, those guys who are wanted on 12 star systems. Just a ton of phenomenal figures that fill the set up and bring it to life. The cohesion of the build and the figures just makes this set something special. The runner-up is the 75244 TANF-4. LEGO did a great job with this ship. It looks fantastic in this set. Not to mention the ship itself is just a great design. They captured it perfectly and extremely well in LEGO. And it makes it a great set for display too, even though it's a play set. This set was released 10 years after the first one, and they definitely made a lot of improvements. The minifigures are also a big plus in this set. You have a wide array of great looking figures that are all super iconic and great to get in just one set. All the figures seem to be based on a new hope besides Bail Organa. He was a big selling point for this set and he is a great addition that makes sense even though it is based off a new hope. This set is just an excellent package for $200. My favorite episode 4 set is the 10188 Death Star. About two-thirds of the movie takes place on the Death Star, and this set has basically every scene depicted. This set is a playset through and through, and I think it's the best LEGO Star Wars playset ever. There are so many rooms to move around in and recreate scenes, and with 24 minifigures, you can fill every room. Play features are everywhere in this set, and any minifigure you think you'll need, you definitely have, and more. I'd also like to mention I think this set is underrated as a display set. While play is the main design here, and definitely the best part of it, it can look great on a shelf too. It has a very commanding presence, and you can set up all the rooms like their own little dioramas. I absolutely love this set, and for $400, I'd still recommend this set every time. Now I would like to mention that this set did actually have a remake, where it's quite literally basically the same set just with updated minifigures. That price did jump to $500 from $400, and it probably could be interchangeable with this one too. So that's kind of why I didn't want to put it on its separate spot on the list. So if you wanted to rope that one in with this one, you definitely can, as they are quite literally the same set. These two sets honestly just capture LEGO Star Wars so perfectly, and I really think they're kind of underrated by the community. Definitely number one spot material, and that's why I put it here. With that, I just want to thank you guys for stopping by. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, let me know your favorite New Hope sets down below, and until next time, I'll see you guys later.